Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Haley, I am 21, and I have mitochondrial disease, and this week happens to be Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week, and as you can tell by the title of this video, I am going to be sharing how I was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease, what some of my symptoms were, how my diagnosis was confirmed through testing, and a little bit about my prognosis and my day-to-day -day life, and a little bit of how it affects me current day. Um, I'm going to try to be as concise as possible, um, but it's me I'm talking about and I tend to talk a lot, but I'm just going to try to stick to the important points. So let's head straight into this video. Alright, so bringing it all the way back to when I was born in March of 2001, I seemed normal and healthy and there was no health concerns or health issues present at birth. However, when I was six weeks old, I was in the hospital for a week with central sleep apnea. If you don't know what that is, basically when I was sleeping, I would stop breathing. Uh, obviously not good for anyone, especially for a baby. So I was in the hospital for a week dealing with that and then I came home on an apnea monitor that would alarm every time I stopped breathing and also some medication to stop it from happening. And as time went on and I got older, I was able to be taken off the medication and the monitor and it eventually resolved itself. So that's that with apnea. Um, but as I was getting older, my parents started noticing that I wasn't quite hitting developmental milestones. My peers would hit, you know, the milestones of crawling and walking and I would be behind them in that and I would achieve it, but it was definitely delayed and um, I was definitely older than what I should have been. My parents also noticed I had hypotonia and so that was definitely a red flag for them. And when I was under a year old, because it was 21 years ago, we don't, my parents don't remember exactly how old I was when I had my first episode. Um, but they are pretty sure it was when I was under a year old, I started having these nausea and vomiting episodes and they would occur every few months and then they would increase in frequency and it always seemed like it was around the same time of month. It, it was weird and my parents knew something was wrong. I ended up being misdiagnosed with cerebral palsy. Um, I do not have that and I was constantly in and out of hospitals and in and out of doctors trying to figure out what was wrong with me, doing countless tests, count was things and at one point both of my parents were accused of poisoning me with heavy metals. Um, obviously not the case. The, ca the test that they did for heavy metals was obviously negative um, but that was something my parents experienced and so it ended up being five years of searching for answers and finally I saw a neurologist and this neurologist diagnosed me with cyclic vomiting syndrome it is exactly what it sounds like. Um, I'm not going to get into it because that's not what this video is about, but you can Google it if you want more information. Um, and so the neurologist diagnosed me with cyclic vomiting syndrome. He put me on medication for it. And you know, my parents were like, awesome. Like we figured out what the, these nausea and vomiting episodes are, but they still knew something else was amiss because also I couldn't physically and energy-wise quite keep up with my peers. I was always lagging behind in that regard. My parents just were, they didn't know what to do. And so we started attending cyclic vomiting syndrome support groups. And at one of these support groups one day, my lovely doctor, who was not my doctor at the time, but now is, um, he was talking about, this was in 2006, I wanna say, so he was talking about how he had been treating and finding that in some mitochondrial disease patients, they also had cyclic vomiting syndrome and vice versa. Now that's not the case for everyone with mito, not the case for everyone with CVS, but in his experiencing, in his experience, he was finding a link and he was talking about CVS in relation to mito and mito in relation to CVS and what mitochondrial disease is. And both of my parents were like, 
that sounds like what Haley has. Like we have to get her in to see him. And so I saw him, I had my first appointment with him and when I was five, cause yeah, it was 2006, it was when I was five. And there he confirmed my diagnosis of cyclic vomiting syndrome and said he was going to keep me on the medication for that. And then he started me on what's known as the mitococktail, which is a bunch of supplements to help mitochondrial function and overall just help the entire body if you have mitochondrial disease. And you know, at the time of my appointment, he said, you know, all of your symptoms fit mitochondrial disease. You know, everything you're telling me you've experienced, it sounds like mitochondrial disease. And like you have mitochondrial disease with, you know, CVS added onto that. But at that time, the only way to diagnose mitochondrial disease was through a muscle biopsy. And because I was so little, my parents and my doctor decided not to go forward with a muscle biopsy. But in 2013, I had genetic testing done via a spit tube. So a tube came from a genetic testing company, spit all my saliva in there, sent it back, got the results, and it confirmed I have mitochondrial disease. A couple years later, in 2018, I got follow-up genetic testing and it was far more extensive. They looked at all of my genetics this time. In 2013, we confirmed that it was solely given to me by my mom and not my dad. So, but in 2018, you know, we got I got further genome sequencing and we got a little bit more clarification on my specific mitochondrial disease. So the form of mitochondrial disease I have, which there are so many, there are countless. Um, the form I have though, has been the only one, the only type to be found in both me and my mom out of the entire world. Okay, I don't know what happened to my camera. Sorry about that. You know, with some mitochondrial diseases, there is a known trajectory of what specific parts of the body are affected or may be affected. You know, there's specific mitochondrial diseases that unfortunately have a very short life expectancy. Um, and you know there's other diseases where it's unknown, where people can die very young or they can live until they're very old. And for me, I'm in the unknown part. And you know, whether you were just diagnosed, you have been diagnosed, you were thinking you might have mono, you're looking for a diagnosis, or you may have a completely different diagnosis, something I wanna share is like, the way I choose to look at it is, I can die tomorrow or I can die at 103 out of spite for the entire world and to like scorn any doctor who has ever told me I wouldn't live that long. Like there's just no way of fully knowing and I choose to not go down the path of the life expectancy thoughts of like, okay, based on statistics, you know, mitochondrial disease patients tend to, you know, not make it past this age or deal with a lot of things at this age, I just choose not to go there and I would encourage you to not go there either. You know, I didn't mean to get too much into this, but just try not to go down the path of worrying about that or being anxious about that. And it's not easy to not go there, but I learned a very long time ago, it is very important you do not go there. And you know, in a similar vein, I'm gonna share like how I live my day-to-day -day life and you know mito affects me a lot it affects every inch of my body pretty much my entire GI system is messed up my pancreas it doesn't work properly you know like in my brain there's just so much that mito has affected for me my life consists of medications hospital visits and admissions surgeries um, you know doctor's appointments more medications IV nutrition at night um, being in a wheelchair when I'm out of the house because I can't walk long distances without feeling exhausted, you know, it's it's a lot. But something I want to talk about is that, you know, society and culture and people online and sometimes even our own brains, speaking from experience, like to put for push forward the narrative that because you're disabled, because you're chronically ill, you have complex health issues, you have something like mitochondrial disease, because your life is different, that you aren't a valued member of society, that you don't have a place in this world or society. And I'm here to tell you that is very false. 
that is not true at all and it makes me mad because I've had that narrative pushed on me many times and ex have experienced many situations where it feels like no one cares because I'm disabled so automatically no one cares um, but I'm here to tell you that that isn't true and those experiences don't define you or your life and you know I think if you've been following me on my channel you know I've shared videos of me traveling with my family and I'm very grateful for that privilege but you know I make it a mission every day um, to live life to the fullest and that's what I want to share with you is to live life to the fullest and I think like I was just mentioning with travel a lot of people when they hear that they think they have to do these spe spectacular things like go here and visit here and go on vacation there and go on a trip here hang out with these people and those people go here and go there and do this and do that and fill up your schedule so that it's non-stop and you know work and work and work up the ladder and you know do like everything possible a lot of people think that's what living life to the fullest means and that is not true that is not the case living life to the fullest means taking every moment you can and just stopping and appreciating it and it's treasuring the small moments it's treasuring you know butterflies are really special to me and when i see one that makes my day brighter you know my pets my dogs they make me smile and on really difficult days when i physically can't get out of bed or do things being able to pet them and just see them play brings me happiness and you know sometimes sitting outside on a cool day and just doing things like that just the small moments you know having inside jokes with my family or my friends and joking or mocking even my experience you know taking every moment to treasure the memory to treasure the moment and you know yes I have these beautiful memories that I cherish from going to these places and I'm grateful for those experiences but the vast majority of memories that I treasure and that I love to bring up to think about are the small ones. A lot of them are ones made when I was really sick with my family. You know there's lots of jokes we do and something as simple as a board game like living your life to the fullest doesn't mean you have to go skydiving. It just literally means stopping and smelling the roses and just doing what you can, looking for one positive of the day, doing what you can. If you have something to look forward to, you love to watch a show or you love to watch a play, you know. There's just so many examples and I hope I'm getting the point across is that that is how I get through life and it is not easy. It has taken me many, many, many years to get to this point. But I'm here to tell you that just because you have something like mitochondrial disease or any other chronic illness does not mean you are not valued. It does not mean you don't have a place in this world or society. And it most definitely does not mean that you cannot live life to the fullest because yes, our reality is very different than most people. Our experiences, our experiences, most people don't have to go through in their lifetime, but I just want to share that you can absolutely still live your life to the fullest no matter what. So that is this video. If you have any questions related to mitochondrial disease, definitely comment them down below or message me on Instagram at the Mito Warrior. Um, if you have any video requests, let me know. And thank you so much if you've stayed to stay to I can't speak today. Thank you if you stay till the end of this video and me rambling and I appreciate you and you are very important in this world and you have a place no matter who you are, what your circumstances are. And yeah, so I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.